As a first step with Keras and TensorFlow, we'll use a pre-trained deep learning model to classify what's in a photo. We'll walk through the steps in this video. Then you can see the code and output in the kernel below. Finally, there are instructions to fork a kernel to create the workspace to write your own code. I highly recommend you watch through the video first before jumping down to look at the code below. It's hard to learn if you're flipping back and forth, and you won't get this while trying to multitask. The code below will still be there when you finish. Pre-trained models are saved on Kaggle. You can attach them to your kernel workspace the same way you would attach a dataset. We've done that in this example kernel and in your workspace. I've also attached a dataset with dog pictures, and we will try to tell each dog's breed from its picture. That data is in this directory. I picked a few image files to test our model with, and I put the file path in a list. Then I used the join function from Python's os.path to append the file name to the directory. The end result is a list of paths to image files. To keep things simple, we'll make predictions with just a few of those images. We need to do a little bit of pre-processing to go from the image file path to something we can run through our model. We'll put all those pre-processing steps into a single function called read and prep images. Some of these pre-processing functions from Keras and TensorFlow will be new to you, but the workflow should start to feel familiar once we get to how models are used. We load the images using the load image function. We have a few images, so we keep them in a list for now using a list comprehension. The target size argument specifies the size or pixel resolution we want the images to be in when we model with them. The model we'll use was trained with 224 by 224 resolution images, so we'll make them have the same resolution here. Then we convert each image into an array using the image to array function. Remember from the previous video that we can store images in three-dimensional tensors. The image to array function creates that 3D tensor for each image. Combining multiple images causes us to stack those in a new dimension, so we end up with a four-dimensional tensor or array. Finally, we use a function called preprocess input. This function does some arithmetic on the pixel values, specifically dividing the values in the input so they are all between minus one and one. This was done when the model was first built, so we have to do it again here to be consistent. This had some function calls you haven't seen before. These calls will start feeling more familiar as you do the exercises and get used to using the commands that you need. The next few lines are easier. We specify the model much as we would in scikit-learn or other modeling frameworks. We'll use a type of model called the ResNet50 model. I give it an argument specifying the file path where we have stored the values in the convolutional filters. We'll call that function we wrote to read and preprocess our data. Then we get predictions by calling the predict method of our model. This line works the same way prediction works in libraries like scikit-learn. Okay, we have predictions about what's in each image. We had four photographs, and our model gave a thousand probabilities for each photo. What's the chance that the image was a tiger shark? What's the chance it was a Pomeranian? What's the chance that it was a toothbrush? And so on. It's convenient to focus on the probabilities for what the model thinks is in the image rather than what all the things it says are not in the image. Keras includes a function called decode predictions to extract the highest probabilities for each image. We call that function with the prediction results and tell it to give us the top three probabilities for each photo. You'll want to see the images too to see if the model is making sense. So the notebook below includes code to display images. If you know much about dog breeds, you'll recognize that these are pretty good. Okay, so you've seen the code to use this type of model. We have an exercise for you to do it yourself. This may still feel like magic right now, but it will come together as you play with a couple of examples and then as we dive into some of the other details. So it's your turn to use these powerful models, then you'll be ready for transfer learning so you can quickly apply these models to new applications.